One sentence to life in prison is set to be released soon for the second chance. Terrence Graham, who is from here in Jacksonville, spent almost two decades in prison for crimes he committed Yikes. as a minor. His case, which ended up before the Supreme Court in 2010, led to a landmark decision on the sentencing of juvenile offenders. Today, a Duval County judge changed his sentence to allow his release. That process has begun, and he could get out in the next few days. News for Jacks reporter Vic Michalucci spoke with a friend of Graham's who says this is a step in the right direction for equality, justice, and reform. Walking into court as an inmate, hopefully for the last time. That's Terrence Graham with a team of lawyers as the judge changed his once life sentence into a new lease on life. Thank you, Your Honor. Now 37 years old, he spent two decades behind bars in Florida State Prison for crimes he committed as a minor. Do you believe that Mr. Graham is rehabilitated? Yes. Do you believe that he's going to go out there and live a good, clean life, not reoffend, not end up back behind bars? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. She when you get to interview him, you'll see what I see. There's always a white woman. Whenever this story happens, right. it's always a white woman. It's not gonna end well for a white woman. So, wait, wait, so who is she to him? Who is she to him? Is she his lawyer? She's the, she's the person and the, the the foundation that got him released. The, the founder of this project. The, the uh, yeah, project Latin Queen. Oh, got it. Yikes! Yeah. In Florida State Prison for crimes he committed as a minor. Do you believe that Mr. Graham is rehabilitated? Yes. Do you believe that he's going to go out there and live a good, clean life, not reoffend, not end up back behind bars? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident. Um, when you get to interview him, you'll see what I see. Jessica Richardson has always seen promise in him. She's a social worker who founded the group Plead the Eighth after reading about his case. The co-founder is Terrence Graham. By the way, the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution states... Oh, so they, he gonna be... I know where he's gonna be staying when he gets up. Exactly. <laughs> in them in them, he gonna be singing them guns? Oh, this is... This you, is a, mm. Hey, hey, I, hey can I... Can I say something about the old oh, man real quick? Yeah, go ahead. But, um, go ahead. Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Her mic is yo, your mic, right your mic is wicked, um, Miss Bird. You might want to drop off and come back on. That's crazy, crazy. Yeah, yo, oh, hey, with the old man, <laughs> yo, the thing with us, son, man, myself included, like when you give us a microphone and it's a lot of people paying attention to us, we gonna do the most. We gonna try to make ourselves sound morally sound, even when we're guilty. You know, we, we you give, lie. yeah, like when you give us a stage like that, it's just like, yo, we just don't say anything. This this yeah. poor old man, he just was like saying anything. What do you what do you think about his story also with the with the tip from like the seventies when the girl was like, <laughs> did you hear that one story? I did, about? yeah, I did, but I didn't really understand it. He said they wasn't trying to take none of his other forms of payment, so he paid it in cash, and he and the really racist. had it. <laughs> yeah, that's what he was saying. That's literally what he was saying. He's saying that because they were racist, they wouldn't take his money. You know, black man. Yeah, you know, what would you say in the seventies? Yeah, you know, you couldn't, yeah, you couldn't go to a restaurant in Boston in the seventies as a black man. <laughs> you can't right. go to Bay. I mean, Let's be honest. You can't even right. go to Bay. Let's be honest. Boston, yeah, one of the most racist places in the country. Right. right. Yeah, I ain't. I ain't never heard of that. I don't know nothing about Boston, but like I've never like. I lived in Boston place. as a kid, man. Yeah, there's, I've only been there. One. No, none, zero racism. Yeah. The only racism is they got some tough Irish neighborhoods where white yeah. boys don't take no shit off of some men, and right. that's called racism. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not only that, but they did like host a bunch of abolitionist societies and were kind of like instrumental in that whole thing. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's where Christmas addicts set off the uh, revolution. Yeah, and we want to find out that that probably was a lie. That probably didn't happen like they said. 
promise in him. She's a social worker who founded the group Plead the Eighth after reading about his case. The co-founder is Terrence Graham. By the way, the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution states, excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. How was he treated in the criminal justice system? In my opinion, his punishment was excessive both times. Um, Graham's score sheet is 60 months. That's five years. Um, A mandatory minimum for a possession of a gun is 10 years. So five years, 10 years, life without parole, that's a little excessive. In 2003, when he was 16 years old, Graham and three other teens tried to rob a barbecue restaurant in Jacksonville. Graham, who was charged as an adult, pleaded guilty to first-degree felony armed burglary with assault and like battery. He was released and... Why was he charged as an adult for a robbery? What did they do to those people when they were robbed? <laughs> and three other teens tried to rob a barbecue restaurant in Jacksonville. Graham, who was charged as an adult, pleaded guilty to first-degree felony armed burglary with assault and battery. He was released and six months later was charged with home invasion robbery when he was just. Okay, so he robbed us. Uh, he robbed a barbecue shack. Also charged with assault and battery, so they obviously pistol whipped or beat up the people, whatever. Um, gets out six months late. So he, so she doesn't, uh, she doesn't factor in the fact that he did that and he was immediately released. As part of his journey through the criminal justice system, <laughs> you know, his, his 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 long arduous racist journey through the criminal justice system, as he robbed a uh, barbecue shack, beat up a bunch of people there, and got about immediately. So yeah, man. Um, I think um, Lada Queen. I think the criminal justice system has been pretty fair to this guy. It sounds like she's in danger, but actually, I don't oh, think she's safe. Probably the only reason he's alive, too. He's in a shit ton of danger. <laughs> you remember yeah, when um, Black guilty. Lives Matter, when they started it, they was out there with the white girls had the big black dildos in their hand. They were swinging black dildos at that really? point. Yeah, you don't remember that? No. Oh, I my don't. God. They was marching and they had black dildos. <laughs> Wow, maybe, maybe she up. maybe she gets she off on that, I, like Ladder Queen. Mm. Maybe she gets off yeah. on the fact, like, is he gonna kill me today? Is he saying that I'm gonna die? You no, know, his some energy, get off on shit like that. I wouldn't say that, but I would say that Sun Man energy is very attractive to Ladder women who grew up around Ladder men. Because one thing about a Sun Man. He going to shoot his shot. Like some man see a white girl with a fat ass. If you're a white girl with a fat ass, because my, my my wife, she had a friend who was, um who had a white girl with a fat ass. I'm talking about stupid ass, right? And when my wife first, when I first met her, I was living in the hood. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was you know, chasing like a motherfucker and shit, right? And I was surrounded by homies and all that stuff, right? And we'll be outside just hanging out, you know, on the block or whatever. And niggas would pull over and hop out of the car and run up on her friend. I'm talking about niggas would skip. So, like, if you're a white girl and you grew up in white America and you used to, Connor liked you since ninth grade and he never said anything. And now he, he's back from college and he's like eight years later and he finally like asked you out for a drink and shit. And you around sons, the type of attention you get, <laughs> it's a totally different world, man. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, I could see that I could see how they get enamored by the attention because women love attention. Parole. That's a little excessive. In 2003, when he was 16 years old, Graham and three other teens tried to rob a barbecue restaurant in Jacksonville. Graham, who was charged as an adult, pleaded guilty to first-degree felony armed burglary with assault and battery. He was released and six months later 
was charged with home invasion robbery when he was just 17 years old. That made him eligible for life in prison, according to Florida law at the time. The law changed in 2014, now requiring juveniles to get a review of their sentence after 20 years. He needed to be held accountable, of course, but not that long. Richardson says the two are already working on getting justice for other people sentenced to life at an early age. Graham telling her he wants to help the community he once harmed. Yeah, he wants to prove some people wrong, and I know that he will. He already had a job before he even gets out. What about people that say, look, these are very serious crimes. Somebody could have been killed. <laughs> right, but there's a reason why that crime was committed. Um, no. Please enlighten us. The the glass. Glass. That's a kind of sick fantasy. It's the I told you, Aka, I told you time and time again. Mind of a mud shark. They are the, fucking the idiots. Kings. She's going to be in the glider system, the glider kings. From I mean, like, out. I mean, this is literally like the arguing over the direction of civilization right here. It's going to be between are we going to go the glider woman route or the glider man route? We're, we're gonna have to stay. We're gonna have to stay tuned with this story. It might, you know, develop. Yeah, there gonna be some. There gonna be a, a update. But now, check this out, though. If, oh, first, salute to the Lux 247, aka Calvin King, aka the real MVP, coming through once again. And make sure y'all hit that like button. Everyone, smash that like button. Smash it, smash it, smash it. Um, Fisherman said something that you know I have to. I got to check you white guys on this shit, man. I got to, man. You just said that the direction of society is going to either go the white man's way or the white woman's way. Well, God damn it, man. Aren't you a fucking man? What are y'all going to do about it? Y'all just go, like, yo, I ain't trying to hear that from no fucking glider man, man. Y'all are the fucking weakest fucking generation the glad have been to ever walk the face of the earth since well we're gonna have to go against team. everybody we're gonna have to go against juice crew sons white women woke patels on Brito's <laughs> looking for a job we gotta put everybody back in line fish hey, but it's I'm too late saying, it's too late fish come on it's too late come on i'm it's getting me late. and mine at Liechtenstein. come on uh yakub floyd like hit me up man i need uh Need like a visa or something. Y'all, 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 white men, man. You can't beat your women. You can't put your women in check. I know now we can't. We can't put our women in check either. But y'all are glider men. Y'all supposed to figure it out. Figure it the fuck out. Right? Ain't that what y'all are? Problem solvers and shit. The problem is the country's collapsing. Collapsing. The solution is uh, get out of the building. Prove some people wrong, like, like, and I know that he will. He already had a job before he even gets out. What about people that say, look, these are very serious crimes. Somebody could have been killed. Right, but there's a reason why that crime was committed, um, and that those things can be addressed. Graham will still be on five years probation with a list of requirements. The first is to complete a transition program through Prisoners of Christ an organization whose mission is giving every Stupid. person their very best opportunity at a true second chance. That's another thing. We got to get job. them motherfuckers out of everything, too. Fucking weak-ass Christianity is a part of the problem. Mm. Everything's got to change. But I, Christianity was like one of their forces back when. They used yeah. Christianity. The they crusade, built all the this shit. Crusade. All this shit is built on Christianity. Catholicism, Christianity, all of this shit is built on this. And it will the, fall that's, apart. That's one of y'all foundation. That's that's the bedrock of your fucking civilization, man. Without that, you wouldn't have. That's the tie that binds. That's the glue. Nah, and I, I don't it. think it's it. And I think it is designed to fail. Mm. Hey, bro, and like, eventually, aren't they, like, a permanent down, like, place to live. And, like, aren't they tearing down churches and the Christian churches over in England? Like, I see a lot of video clips of uh, migrants, uh, you know, just tearing, sh tearing stuff up out there. So, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think what we're talking about is philosophically how it's going to destroy the glider. 
because compared to Islam, which is like hardcore and militant, Christianity is very turn the other cheek and all that bullshit. And it's very hard to compete with Islam when you're not militant. Completely exactly. transition program. Or Judaism, which is also very militant in its own way. Through Prisoners of Christ, an organization whose mission is giving every person their very best opportunity at a true second chance. That'll help him get a job and eventually a permanent place to live. I'm Vic Michalucci, Channel 4. You already got a place to live. For the local station. Plea the Eighth, which advocates for juvenile justice reform, is working to prevent cases like Graham's in the future. Graham's attorney told us this, quote, I am grateful that Terrence will be free very soon and that he was accepted to the Prisoners of Christ reentry program. I would ask all to pray for his successful reentry into our community.